Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. Today we are talking about habits. Habits go hand in hand with mental health and May is also Mental Health Awareness Month. It is also Asian American, Native Hawaiian, Pacific Islander Month. Really awesome things to celebrate within the community. So today I wanted to share seven self-care habits and shifts that I've made in my life that have made me a happier and healthier person. These are small tweaks I've made in my life that have really impacted my mood, my energy, just my overall happiness and quality of life. Sometimes we try to reach far and wide for these big profound changes that we need to make and it's often this all or nothing mentality, but I really believe that it's the little things that we do every day that add up to the big things. And habits are just the building blocks of actually designing our lives. So I'm gonna share with you those habits and shifts that have helped me and maybe they will help you too. So without further ado, let's dive in. The first habit I wanna talk about is actually a specific shift and it's actually a specific item that I purchased that had made a big difference in my life and that is blackout curtains. It's been a priority of mine to improve my quality of sleep and since I have TMJD and just all these like jaw issues it impacts how rested I feel at night and when I went to Korea we stayed in different places that had blackout curtains and I slept like a rock. It was just insane how much deeper I slept. So the first thing I did when I got back to America was purchase some blackout curtains. They weren't a huge investment. I got them on Amazon and we just used the same curtain rod that we have in our living room, hung them up and voila. I have slept straight through the night several days in a row and it's been amazing. Getting quality rest is so so important and that carries me throughout my day. So I honestly cannot believe I didn't purchase them sooner. The hype is real. So blackout curtains. The second shift I made was deleting TikTok from my phone. Okay, so yes, I'm a content creator and I do post and share on TikTok, but having it on my phone and scrolling mindlessly did not make me feel good. There's just something about TikTok that is way more addicting than Instagram. I find myself on there longer. I use TikTok a lot for searching for things, like if I want to purchase something or if I want to find a restaurant in a new city. It's great for those things. It's great as a search engine. But if I don't go on with a specific intention, I can easily get caught up in my For You page and it doesn't make me feel good. So I deleted it from my phone and I do have it on my iPad. So when I wanna post on TikTok my own content, then I just post it from my iPad and I find that I am not really scrolling on my iPad for that long because I'm like at my desk, I'm working. It just changes things. So that's been impactful for me and my mental health. <laughs> the third habit that I've said before and I'm gonna say it again because I think it's so important and we often just brush it aside and that is charging my phone away from my bed. I charge my phone across the room. I physically cannot reach it. So if I wake up in the morning, I'm not able to grab my phone and start my day with the screen in my face. I wanna start my day feeling at peace. I don't wanna open up my emails, read Slack message. I've also set a rule to not open those apps or even check those things until I'm seated at my desk. The longer I avoid my phone in the morning, the more likely I'm able to start choosing activities for myself that make me feel really good. And I have all day to check my emails and Slack and social media. So on top of the habit of charging across the room, I also try to associate not checking my email and my Slack until I'm seated at my desk, ready to start my work day. And so far that's been working. On the weekends, I'm definitely more lenient about that, but during the weeks, absolutely, I do not want to start my day with a phone in my face. Speaking of phones, I want to give a huge shout out to Casetify for sponsoring today's video.
I love their phone cases. Not only are they super cute, but also they are customizable. Look, I've got my name on it. On top of that, they are also working towards being more eco-conscious. Casetify upcycles used phone cases into re-Casetify pellets, reducing virgin plastic use and helping protect our planet. They've upcycled over 430,000 cases, keeping 40,000 kilograms of plastics out of landfills and with up to 21.3 feet drop protection. Casetify cases are built to last and minimize environmental impact. I'll leave a link in the description where you can learn more about Casetify and check out their really cute cases. Man, when I was in Korea, the line to get into the Casetify store was so long. It was a big, beautiful store. This was, I think, I forget which mall it was. It looked so awesome. People can just walk in and customize things, add little charms to their phone cases and just walk out with a super cute setup. Go check them out. The fourth habit that has made a really big impact on my mental health and my physical health is walking on my desk treadmill after lunch. So I've been doing a little habit stacking, ending my lunch cues, me walking on the treadmill for X amount of time. Typically it's anywhere from 60 to 90 minutes. It's at least 60 minutes. I get so many steps in. When I'm walking on my treadmill, I'm just on a roll. I don't know what it is. It just gets me into the flow state. I know a lot of people have questioned how coordinated you have to be to be able to type while walking, but I started out really slow when I first got my treadmill. I think I was walking at like 1.2 and now I'm walking at 2.5. If I'm editing photos and I have to like drag something on my screen, then like walking is not the best thing for that. But if I'm typing an email, working in Notion, writing script, planning my content, it is great for that. And I do that pretty much every single work day. Now, I'm not telling you to go out and buy a desk treadmill, but I think the simple act of walking after you eat, just as a way to kind of aid your digestion before you immediately return to your desk, I think that's a small tweak we can all try to make in our work day, even if it's going with a coworker and doing your one-on-one -on -one outside on a walk. It's summer, it's nice outside. What else can we do to integrate more breaks outside during our workday. My fifth habit is also along the lines of walking. After work, I go on a post-work walk with my husband. We will bring one of the dogs, not both, because it's very stressful to bring both of them. We choose one dog in the morning and one dog in the evening. So in the evening, we just do this loop around our neighborhood and we offload our day. I really look forward to it because it helps me end my workday. It helps me decompress from my workday and catch up with my husband. This video should just be about walking. Walking is clearly a pillar in my mental and physical health and we could all do more of it. The sixth habit that has made me a happier and healthier person is really indulging in my skincare rituals. Just like prioritizing my sleep, I've really been prioritizing my skin. As I've grown older, I've really appreciated the different things that we can do to help our skin and help it appear brighter, more supple. I really like to do things that help with lymphatic drainage, so like dry brushing, gua sha, just really taking my time and enjoying the process. Sometimes taking your time can be a luxury, so if you are a very busy person and you feel like you have to kind of rush throughout your day, I encourage you to find those pockets, if it's your skincare, if it's washing your face, if it's how you apply your serums, to see if you can make that a very indulgent time for you, because that's what I do, and I love it so much. Last, but certainly not least, my seventh habit that has made me a much happier and healthier person is my weekly therapy sessions. So for me, this is a big one. I have not been able to find a therapist that I connected with that was also covered by insurance in my network. That has never happened for me. I've always paid out of pocket. I work for myself, so in the past, I've had my own funky insurances and the benefits are not great. But thanks to my husband, I'm really grateful that I'm able to hop on his plan. He's got a very juicy corporate benefits package and my therapy is covered 100%. I don't pay anything and it's every week. And this has been 
so important for my mental health, but also just like allowing me time every week to share what's going on in my mind and, and not just journaling about it. Yeah, I feel really grateful. I found this therapist through my hairstylist. Whenever I get my hair cut, we talk about mental health and she always talks about her therapist and somehow her therapist ended up also being within my network. That has been a super game changing habit that has really improved my weeks and I feel so much happier because of it. All right, friends, those are the seven habits and shifts that have made a big impact on my life this year. I hope they inspire you to take care of yourself and to identify the things that will make a big difference for you in your life, no matter how small they are. Habits don't have to be complicated. You don't have to go out and buy things. When we take time to pour back into our own cups, we're able to then pour into others. And I think it's super important to remember that we cannot pour from an empty cup up, cliche but true so make sure you are taking care of yourself not just in here but also in here thank you all so much for tuning in thank you to Casetify for partnering on today's video comment down below with some habits that have made an impact on your life i'd love to read them and keep the conversation going thanks for watching friends and i'll see you in the next one bye